Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, Talk okay. a little bit about yourself. Okay, I couldn't hear anything. I'm sorry. No um, problem. Uh, my name's Umber. I go to UC Davis, and I'm a second-year statistics student, and that's all about me. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, it's an honor that you agreed to join the conversation. Thank Vina? You. Yeah. Hi. So um, my name's Vina, and I'm also a UC Davis student. I am studying neurobiology, physiology, and behavior, and I am a rising junior. Good job. Um, what do you mean? Hi, um, I'm Vardhani. I also go to UC Davis. I'm a managerial economics student and I'm a rising senior. Thank you for coming. Meta? Uh, hey guys, so I go. I am going to go to UCSD this, um, starting this year and I'm a freshman and I'm studying data science. Okay, so welcome all of you. Uh, so here, these are all Gen Z kids from California they're all going to UC and they share their perspective about Bollywood, society in general, and SSR case with us. So how do you connect with Bollywood? Uh, Amber, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. I think my first connection with Bollywood came when I was younger, when my family always put Indian music channels on the TV and it was just a variety of music, whether it's like Mutche, Shadi Karugi and like all of these different like songs and we used to clean the house together and I think that's where I first got my connection with Bollywood and then my family's super involved in it, of course, after seeing like Big Villain and stuff like that, that's my favorite movie. Um, that, that just got me into Bollywood and ever since my childhood, I think I just had a strong connection with it. but. My perspective is starting to change now with this whole case and everything. So yeah. Vina? Yeah, um, kind of similar to Umber. I was actually born in India. So um, Bollywood is obviously very big in you know the motherland. And uh, coming over to the States, it was a way for me to connect with my parents because you know it was a staple in uh, them growing up as well. And uh, I would say Bollywood had had a very like huge influence on me. Um, after watching Chuck the India, I ended up playing field hockey and, you know, came to Davis as a D1 field hockey player. So it's uh, definitely played a huge role in some of my life decisions as well. But like Umber said, with the case, there has definitely been a lot of change in perspective on um, the glamorization of Bollywood. Neha? Um, Yeah, so really similar. Yeah, for me, just like Umber, it was really the music, like, Movies were not really a huge part of my life until I entered like middle school. I could not stand movies, but somewhere in my head, I got this like something just sparked, and I'm like, Shah Rukh Khan, Shah Rukh Khan is Bollywood. And so, like, for me, it was Shah Rukh Khan and it was Priyanka Chopra, and that was it. And that was that was the entire entertainment industry for me. It was Bollywood music and Shah Rukh Khan and Priyanka Chopra, and that was it. I did not even know that like pop English music like existed until I got into like third grade and I heard you belong with me. So <laughs> it was a huge part of my life, especially the music. And then more recently, like even the movies, these masala movies have been like it for me for so long. What do you mean? Yeah, so actually for me, it's completely the opposite. So I'm actually a million. And so I grew oh. up with a lot of like 80s and 90s Tamil music um so I didn't really come even into contact with Bollywood until I was probably like 10 or 11 and I kind of just like happened upon three idiots I think me and my family were watching three idiots or thighs I mean for I'm not really sure but we watched it and I was I was just like I couldn't stop so then I like listened to all the songs and then I found more songs and then started watching movies and then really my like fervor for Bollywood started in high school when like junior year of high school and I like had it in me I was like I'm going to learn Hindi so I just watched as many Bollywood movies as I possibly could in one summer and I learned Hindi and that was basically how it started but obviously now like things are changing I think I'm going back to like regional stuff now but I did start from more regional entertainment and then came to Bollywood and now I'm going back but yeah 
Okay, so it's nice to know that all of you, like, you live here, yeah. you go to school here, but you're still in some way, you're interested and involved in Bollywood. So you've been exposed to this industry, the movies, the songs, since you were a kid. Was there a point when you got unhappy or disillusioned with the movie songs, lyrics or industry as a whole? I would let Vardini start. Um, I think for me, it started like very recently, actually, within the last year or so. Um, when I started listening more to the lyrics, because before I couldn't understand because I didn't know Hindi, so I didn't know what the lyrics meant. But for a lot of these like item songs and uh, the sort of promotional songs, a lot of the lyrics are really objectifying, like really misogynistic. And I started noticing like in the movie as well, like the females didn't really have much to do or Bollywood movies just ended up becoming remakes of Tamil or Telugu movies that already were being made in the South. So I just started noticing a lack of original content coming from the Hindi film industry. And so it just made me really disappointed because I, I was kind of like, these actors and these directors have a lot of potential and they're just taking content from the South and from like regional content in India and, you know, packaging it and marketing it to be mass or to fit for the, like the larger audience. And it just, I don't know, it didn't make me very happy. So yeah, that's when I really started getting disillusioned about it is when I started seeing song remakes and movie remakes becoming like the norm. What about you, Veena? Um, kind of similar to Vardhani, uh, I'm also really in touch with my Punjabi roots and a lot of our like folk songs and just like songs that were staple in like Punjabi culture have been like remixed and kind of hypersexualized in a way. And by all means, like there's not a really big problem with like women feeling comfortable in their skin and like being confident in their body, but it definitely took away the authenticity of, of like the industry for me. And also like the promotion of colorism in a lot of the songs, it definitely shows like a very exclusive view of like the fair, perfect Indian. Um, and you know, that's not really representative of our country too. So it definitely caused a lot of dissonance and disconnection to me. And I would say that also happened to me fairly recently, like the, these past three years, just like hearing the songs, watching the movies that have come out, it just didn't seem as authentic as it was before. I agree. Amber? I think more for me, it's it's the same as Verdini and Vina, where when I was growing up in my teenage years, I started to realize the reality of the industry. And I think when my family really started to talk about like when Gia Khan's case was happening in 2013, and then Salman Khan's court case with the running over a homeless man and all of these cases added up, that's when I kind of realized like, oh, this really isn't like as picture perfect as they always show. And there's there's so many flaws, whether they these actors think they're above the law. And it was just, I would say that span in my high school years that I realized that I'm starting to lose like the connection with the movies. It's just with the songs. And that's honestly just seeing Salman Khan and everything or any other actors like doing that stuff off the screen, but on the screen, they're like Chulbul Pandey or whatever. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> so different. So that's when we started the disillusionment right there. Yeah, I think kind of similar to that um, for me, because I kind of started watching the movies when I was in middle school. And for me, it was this like renaissance of action films which really drew me into movies in the first place so on one hand i was watching like the avengers and then on the other hand i was watching like bill Valley, and i was just like in my head i really struggled to differentiate what was like a problem with the industry and what was just like you know the style like the big songs and like the dramatic dialogues that's all style but then the like the damsel in distress like that's not that's not cool that's not nice and for me i think kind of similar to umber it was probably sultan that was the movie that was just so disturbing to me and i just i could not like i was sitting in the theater watching it and i was like about to cry i was like i don't understand 
how this can be seen as empowering or good or okay in any way. And at the same time, I was like, oh, he's Salman Khan is going to get so much applause for doing this. Like, wow, female empowerment, female athletes. And I was like, this is so wrong in so many ways. And I was just like, I can't not believe that this is happening. And that's kind of when I started to get like a sour taste in my mouth, like regarding these masala films. Thank you, Mayda. Yeah. Uh, so I'll start with you, Mayda. What drew you in about SSR case? So I, as I've said, I really am drawn to those masala films because I feel like living here, it's a little harder for me to relate to those movies that are like, you know, about small town life and like the intricacies of like, I guess, like real relationships between like real people, like real students in India and like their stories. It just, it was, I wasn't able to like click as well with those. And it's something I've been working on, but basically I was always watching these like big masala movies. And so I never actually really saw Sushant Singh Rajput like anywhere. I never seen any of his movies. It was only Rabata where I was like, oh, look at that song. That is a jam. He looks so good. And then the, okay, the Vogue cover, the Vogue shoot with Kendall Jenner. I was like, oh, this guy's like kind of cool, kind of famous. And then it was when he died that I was like really concerned because it just didn't make sense to me. And I think at the hardest point was understanding that someone who was so talented, so hardworking, came into the industry with such big dreams and such a good work ethic and was still like just used and discarded by these people who think that they're just so much better. And like as someone who's always like, you know, had that like 1% of my brain dreaming like, oh, yeah, I could go work in the movies. I was like crushed. So I think that's kind of what drew me in. Okay. Amber? Um, so I think I have three reasons that really drew me into it. Uh, first is, I know Shushant was a huge devotee of Mahadev, and personally, I'm a huge devotee of Mahadev too. So it was that spiritual connection that I always knew that Mahadev, Mahadev, Om Namah Shiva, and when he passed away, it was just like, that spiritual connection was lost. It's like I lost a brother. So that was one reason that just drew me, drew me in. Uh, second was that I have all my families in UP. So I have some family in Bihar. So everyone was questioning it throughout June and July. Like what really went down? Things aren't adding up. What is really going on? And that started to get my family more involved. And then I think the third thing was, of course, whenever I used to come down every morning, my dad had Republic TV on, I hear Arnav yelling out, Poochta hai Bharat, and I'm like, oh, beautiful. Every morning we can hear this. And I think when Arnav started to speak out, I started to go on Twitter, Telegram, just joining these chats, and I'm like, there's something fishy for sure. And that just drew me in together. Yeah. What do you Yeah, so for me, um, I had this pipe dream because I'm going into like marketing. That's like my field that I want to go into. I always had this pipe dream of like marketing for Bollywood and like, oh, I want to work in the film industry. And it was all just, always this thing at the back of my head. And Sushant was one of those people where he had no film connection, no background in the film industry. And he really just came and like took over. And he made such a big name for himself. And like, he was one of those people that I genuinely did look up to. And I have seen most of his movies. And I like, when I heard of his passing, like I was awake, it was like two in the morning. And I saw the news article that came out that he had passed and I couldn't even believe it. Because I, for a while, like had known the talent that this man possessed and the fervor with which he like, attacked all of his dreams i knew that something was amiss like i couldn't believe that they had said oh sushant singh rajput has committed suicide like i genuinely couldn't believe it and so just after like a couple days of reading everything and you know seeing the facts come out and things not adding up and you know watching videos of people trying to like piece things together and clearly there was something amiss and so that's when I started to think, you know, there's something really fishy going on and just started like looking into things and trying to figure out what could have actually happened. Because clearly this was not a suicide and he could not have 
killed himself with the man that he was and what he represented there's no way that he could have killed himself so yeah that's that's how it drew me in yeah yeah um kind of similar to like Vardhani um also I love Guy Bocce that was like my favorite film and that was his debut film so I've always really connected with um his acting in that and also around the time when he passed I mean we had two other iconic stars passing away but his something about his was just so disturbing to me because the whole media at the point like perceived him to have committed suicide while these other two actors obviously unfortunately you know died due to their sickness but he made it was shown that he made that decision to end his life and i was like oh that is something about it just didn't sit right with me and i do remember like hitting up umber and hitting up vardhani just talking about it for the longest time because you know there are a lot of videos that did come out with like him expressing how he didn't really have many friends in the industry and just like how he felt very shunned. And it also hurt me personally because I've, you know, experienced that growing up too. But then you start going more in depth into the case and, you know, his body was, his the pictures of his body were circulating the internet. And you can kind of see on like his neck and just other places that like something wasn't adding up. Suicide was just not, in the picture and you know the way his you know his last rites were rushed and everything and you know a lot of disconnect with like the investigators in this uh when he was um found and to like finding out that his manager also like had killed herself um it just some um, it nothing was adding up and it really like captivated me to go more in depth into the case yeah so just like all of you said the story we found out and the story they were trying to sell, it did not add up. So everybody got, I mean, you can say, intrigued, curious, and they like wanted answers. I think like the the worst part of it was that how how sloppy it was. Like, of course, like crime happens and criminals get away, but like, God, the the level of mishaps, like if you're a criminal. Like you, the the way that they completely just assumed that everyone would buy it. They're like, no one's even gonna question it. Like, who cares? Like, they didn't even try. And I was like, you cannot just disrespect the entire country like this. Like, we are not stupid just because we don't have time no, to follow your I every they move. Definitely, like, they definitely questioned our intelligence because I think it's they had gotten away with things like this before, um, and they thought it would be easy like to just say oh you know thoughts and prayers like r.i.p this and that and that people would just buy it and move on which is what has happened in the past and it like people have bought into that and people have bought into the oh suicide or oh no he was really innocent but like i think people are really starting to come into their own thinking now because you can even see with releases that are coming out or new music that's dropping like people aren't having it like no one's gonna put up with any sort of like trashy content or you know trashy marketing anything like that like the people want what's right now and that's really evident now and it, i'm glad that people are finally starting to speak up about it because for so long people have kind of just we've all kind of just bought into whatever they're trying to sell us and just moved on because we think it's trivial but now it's it's great that you know it is important and it, it, it is important to speak up about it because that's the only way that things are gonna even change in the future. Mm -hmm. Just like Beyonce Sharma Daigi. Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> no, yeah, but like this just brings us to the next point here that how has this case changed what you always thought or perceived about Bollywood? Hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Let's, uh, Amber, you can start. I think parts of what I found out through Twitter and everything did surprise me, of course. And my favorite actress is Shraddha Kapoor. So definitely this past week has been very like, wow, <laughs> not surprised. But I think it's, it got me more angry because when his death came out, the fact that everyone in the industry knows 
what happened. But they're trying to still sell the depression narrative, the suicide narrative. That just pisses me off. It's like what everyone else said here. Like, they think we're dumb. But now I'm glad that Bollywood can realize that there's a power of social media, even though we're in, like, America and, like, they're in India. We can still have an influence. And it really changed it into a more negative way. I hope there's just a big cleanup in Bollywood. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Same for me. Like my favorite actor, my favorite actor and actress is Ranveer and Deepika. And I have loved them for like, who like how long? I've loved them for so much. And as soon as Sushant passed, as soon as Deepika posted her little like, oh, like, Depression is an illness. Yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? Because like, at this point, like the whole industry must know that this is a cover up. And she's really still out here trying to like sell us that, oh, like depression. And she's just like pushing her own agenda. And for a while, I tried to make excuses and be like, no, like maybe she didn't know. Like, come on, like the whole industry knew it's not acceptable for her to be trying to push her own agenda through like the passing of a, a colleague that's what it is like Absolutely. she used the death of a colleague for her own agenda and i just don't think it's acceptable fair like clearly there's some messy things happening in bollywood like i really hope that this does but that, that this leads to a cleanup happening absolutely and kind of to you know go more into vardhani's point um, I remember when they, when the club was pushing her, like mental health is important. It is an illness and, you know, we got to do something to fix it. Um, I was talking to Vardhani about it and I was just like, oh, it just kind of seems so tone deaf to just start speaking out about it without really memorializing his life. I mean, everyone had their small, like, grievances um, on his death, but, you know, they never really memorialized his life, which also was really unsettling to me because, you know, it's funny, to, it was really just odd to me that like, oh, he died, but now you're out here pushing your own like agendas onto us to make it seem like, you know, he was like suicidal or he had depression and it just, it you know, everything about it just never really sat right with me and it also, like as someone who has had issues with like mental health, um, it kind of invalidates people who do have those problems because uh, it's not as, it, like it, they kind of portrayed it in a very like black and white kind of scenario, but you know, it's definitely not, there was so much gray area that was being trying to like push under the rug. So yeah, it, it's, it's still very unsettling to me to like, you know, watch, a lot of like Bollywood actors and actresses like try to still cover it up. I remember re um, Umber and I, we tag team the De Deanna Pandey's like Instagram posts about um, like, there was this whole thing about like smashing the patriarchy because of how the media was um, attacking Rhea Chakraborty. And we were just like, okay, if we're really out here trying to, you know, smash the patriarchy, then you wouldn't be supporting films that also like kind of go against it where like a woman is a very submissive role, you know? And um, even in that same time, uh, her niece Ananya came out with Beyonce Sharma Jayangi and I was just like, oh, this is really so tone deaf. And the funniest thing about this whole thing, uh, Deanna like kept deleting my comments and Umber's comments on her post and she ended up having to delete the whole thing because people were just attacking her and she had no defense towards it <laughs> yeah i mean ananya pande like i was that kind of person who i suppose for a long time i just never understood the idea of acting i was just like oh you just like show up and like be happy be sad i guess i just have never seen like actually good acting because i was like okay yeah nepotism exists but like what's the harm like i was following ananya pande on instagram because I was like, oh, she's so pretty. Her OOTDs are on point. And I did not realize just how many people were working for her until quarantine started. And she started posting her own pictures. And I was like, oh, sis. Anyways, I mean, for me, it was like Tiger Shroff, Arman Malik. Like, they're all products of nepotism. And they are my, like, favorites in Bollywood. And, I mean, I'm not 
like fully invalidating them like uh, they are working really hard but the whole thing is that this idea that someone like Ananya Pandey can show up and bomb her first movie, bomb her second movie, get a third, <laughs> bomb her third movie. Like, where is this coming from? She's like, what, 20 years old and she bags student of the year too. Like most people would have to work into like their thirties before they can even get a lead role. And that's if they're lucky. And so for me, it really went from seeing like nepotism as like this like mild annoyance that was just kind of there as to like being a real and serious threat to like the industry, the art that's being made. Like, I mean, what I say is we're only tapping into like 1% of the possible talent in the country. How can you even expect that you're seeing like even the top 20% of actors on screen. You'd be like, yeah, Ranbir Kapoor, he's like a good actor, Amir Khan. And I'm like, yeah, but are they the best? Are they even in the top 10%? Like, we'll never know because the other 1 billion people in the country aren't even being given a chance. Absolutely. Yeah, what me and Vina were talking about the other day actually was that like, nepotism is going to exist in all fields, right? Like whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a businessman, whatever it is, there will be nepotism. If your father's a businessman and your son wants to be a businessman, like, of course, you're going to want to help your son get into the field. The difference between Bollywood and another field is that you need to actually have talent to make it in a field like doctor, lawyer, businessman. Like, you have to jump through a lot of hoops, even if you are a product of a famous businessman or a famous doctor. You still have to pass the MCAT. You still have to do well in your residency and you have to do all of these things well in order to be considered a reputable doctor. However, in the film industry, it you can basically jump through all the hoops because your dad is an actor. And in that way, you don't actually have to have talent to make it in the film industry, which is sad. And that's also one of the things that Sushant had said in an interview is that, see, nepotism is fine as long as the right talent is able to come up. But as soon as nepotism stops or blocks the right talent from coming up, that's when it becomes a problem. And that is exactly what's happening in Bollywood. Because why is an Ananya Pandey and a Sara Ali Khan allowed to even exist in the same sphere as like Vicky Koshal or Abe Deol or anyone like that, right? Like there, there are people that have actually proven their acting chops. And then there are people like Ananya Pandey, Sara Ali Khan, Janvi Kapoor, who are just allowed to exist because they happen to be Sri Devi's daughter. Or they happen to be Saif Ali Khan's daughter, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, aside from talent, there's also this idea of skill, right? Like, oh, if you're rich, your parents can pay for like SAT tutoring, or like you can take it multiple times, which is fine, because at the end of the day, you're still you're getting the knowledge, like you're still smart, you might not be talented, but you have the skill. And there's nothing like that in acting in Bollywood at all. Yeah, um, also, I wanted to add on. Um, I do think that uh, we as an audience also do play a role in like having a lot of these nepotism actors and actresses rise because we're really invested in their parents' life from a very young age. Like right now, Karina Kapoor is pregnant, right? And it, it's we're all gonna be like going after that baby when it's born. I mean, just like we do with the more, like it's, it's part of the problem is us too, because we, allow like the glamorization of their kids um in the industry so like obviously we're kind of like hyping them up ourselves in order to do well in the industry this and is also they ride that wave too so it's like it's a give and take really yeah in another way it's like also this is also like a small part but even with nepotism of course it's it's some ways bad because like actors like Sara Ali Khan or Janvi Kapoor, like they get straight to the film. When you're like an outsider, you have to be exploited. You have to go through so many hurdles, which is just unfair that like, say like Karthik Aryan has to face so much exploitation in comparison to Arjun Kapoor, who just goes in, gets key and ka, and suddenly just keeps on going. Yeah, like the casting couch is such a big thing in Bollywood. And a lot of people that, have, are, that are outsiders were victims of it too. And it's so sad that, you know, you have to exploit yourself in order to, like, chase your dreams. And, you know, there needs to, I agree, there needs to be some sort of cleanup in Bollywood. And that's been long overdue. Kind of going off of what you said about, like, um, Karina Kapoor's pregnancy. Like, I mean, 
Yeah, she's famous, but I mean, we also have to think about like comparing it to Hollywood. Like, like okay, like Gigi Hadid had a baby, right? And but like, are we really gonna have like a Ty Morrell econ going on over here? Like, no, we're not because the the media doesn't just run after babies like that. You know, there's there is something going on. Like in your real life, like. How many people do you know who are like actually invested in the life of Temur Ali Khan? Like, why on earth are we being fed like so much content about him? Like, who asked? That's it's just bad. very cyclic. You know, they don't want to, they don't have anything else to post. So they're like, Temur walking on the road. And I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. And also, like, even Shashan's case, it's becoming kind of a whole different thing now, too. Like, um, you know, I, I, I'm glad there have been like, drug busts but it kind of is straying away from his actual murder and i've also expressed that um to both umber and vardini like how it's you know he, he it's so sad because i feel like his murder has been completely like derailed you know we, we haven't really acknowledged him and his life at all and now it's like becoming a whole thing for everyone's agenda and it's just See, really it's just like easy for everyone to realize if it's if it's a drug bust and it's like other actors are getting caught then oh then that becomes the news and then that's easy for the public to sensationalize and it's newsworthy and trps and ratings and all of these kinds of things so people are just doing what they need to do in order to get the clout and it's just really disheartening because this guy died like he's been murdered and instead of focusing on the evidence in the case and why he was killed and how he was killed we're now focusing on how to sensationalize sensationalize the case against him and against like other actors when they have really nothing to do with the actual case or the actual murder i don't know absolutely no i agree and it's very disheartening to see that because you know that is someone's son that is someone's brother that is someone's kid it's just why are we taking i feel like the more this case is getting like untangled and the more people are getting exposed um we're straying away from his life and it kind of dehumanizes him in a way they're taking that that like building anger against bollywood and kind of using it to like derail the case because they're like oh we're cleaning up the entirety of bollywood but yet like the murder the murder still is still there like you need to solve the murder before you go after the entire industry like start small and then go big don't just try to do something and then pop in absolutely okay so that brings me to the next point so you guys we talked about casting couch we talked about nepotism we talked about so many things that's prevalent in society you've been exposed to hollywood you've been here in American, like, what's your, I will use the word dual perspective about society as large. Uh, Amber, you can start. I think with so much media coverage in both India and America and how the media always per portrays the negative stuff to the spotlight that we kind of lose in touch the positive aspects of society in general. And I feel like personally to keep, in order for keeping up with things happening in India, it's just more like Republic TV is on YouTube. You can go live anytime and just watch it, which is awesome. But I think for society in general, whether it's India or here, it's just, I wish like 2020 is like the wake up call for all of us that we just need to really change humanity or maybe start over humanity and try and build it up to like a positive, pedestal in a way. So that's mostly my thoughts on the whole dual perspective in both countries. Nina? Oh, I, I definitely agree with Umber's sentiments. Uh, we definitely are always exposed to the negatives in media. And, you know, sometimes that can also taint our judgment on like the actual facts of the case. And pretty much, I think, like obviously, it is a problem. Like, there is a huge problem in Bollywood, but also I think, at, and from a media standpoint, we need, definitely need to, you know, stick to the story a little bit, and also like remember that he was a person, and also show 
aspects of his life that, you know, we might not have been exposed to, like the happier times, you know, his love for astrology and, you know, his, you know, the apps that he was like trying to get past, like those kind of things. You know, I feel like we definitely need to see both sides of the things, you know, yeah, he's no longer with us, but that doesn't mean we can't, you know, revolutionize his life. Yeah. Um, for me, I think one big difference that exists between Hollywood and Bollywood would probably have to be like the award shows, because I feel like like, let's just say it, film fair is a joke. Like, it's it's a mess when you have people like, you know, Ananya Pandey winning Best Debut. It's just, it's just a joke, you know? It's like enter. It's like watching a serial. It's entertainment. There's like people running around and dancing and like fireworks and you're like, wow, but like, who's winning the award? Like, nobody cares, nobody knows. Whereas like something like the Oscars, although there's been like a lot of controversy surrounding it, it still retains its like merit to a degree. And like, recently they passed all these new like, rules for who can qualify for best picture and they're trying to they're really trying to bring the diversity in they're like oh if you don't have x amount of crew members of color x amount of crew members who have physical or mental disabilities people of color women everything so they're at least they're like trying to you know keep up with the times and bring us quality content which helps you know because like when a film like a parasite goes on to win an oscar like people are exposed to at least, you know, like one or two good films even so that we can like, you know, refine our taste so that we're not just always watching blockbuster garbage, which is like fun, but it's not really, it's not art. It's not good for you. It's not good for society. Completely agree. I think um, for me, going off of what Umber and Vina said, I think fear is like a really easy tactic for media to use and that's seen here and in India I think it, there's fear in now in the coverage of this SSR case of oh you know Bollywood is this horrible place and any film industry is this scary horrible place like no one any outsider is doomed because they're never going to make it and there's just a lot of fear mongering that happens um, and I think like both of them said it's just important to think about the positives and showcase the positives too, that, you know, yes, the film industry has a lot of problems and needs a lot of fixing, but if people aren't willing to or wanting to take that leap and create art and actually put out good content, then Bollywood's always gonna stay the same. You know, there has to be people that are going to want to make that change and want to change something in the industry for it to actually change. And that's the kind of positive that I, like to think of taking out of this is that we all need to come together to try to take that leap of faith to actually make the change instead of just calling people out or saying oh there needs to be change made like get someone to actually do it if you can actually take the leap and be in a movie that's good be in a like a socially conscious change bringing type of movie do it you know uh, become a director and direct good films in Bollywood, like there are so many things that we can all aspire to do. And I think that's what the positive should be to take out of this case instead of being, you know, disillusioned and scared and angry, which obviously is valid and fair. But the larger takeaway is that in order for a change to happen, we all have to kind of take action and do that and take steps towards making that change too. Absolutely. And I, and to like add on to that, I also think like validating the audience's concerns or like the, their views on the problems of movies, like that's the only way we're going to also change like the perceptions of certain things that are being presented to us in the movie. Um, Chennai Express is definitely not representative of like South, <laughs> South Indian <laughs> culture. And I know like as a, like a Sikh American, like, the perception of a Sardar in um, Bollywood is like really dopey and dumb. And like, that is completely not representative of the, you know, the demographic. So if we can keep voicing our concerns and like calling them out when they are like playing into stereotypes, then I think we can also get better movies out of it as well. Yeah. And I feel like the worst trend or not the worst but one of the worst ones in both hollywood and bollywood is the remakes 
Like yeah. it's happening in Hollywood too. It's not just a, oh, Bollywood artists have lost creativity. No, it's like an everywhere problem. Like it is, it is not good. Like nobody is enjoying that anywhere. And, the and yet it with keeps that happening. Is that, like they, they, they go off of the nostalgia value and it works. Yeah. Like that's the problem. It works on people. Like when the Ape Do Teen remake came out, like everyone was listening to it. And then like, freaking um like mm -hmm. any remake that comes out like das bahane karke i was like what <laughs> who wants to it working gets hundreds of millions of views they make they remake oh, old movies like like jurva 2 they remade now they're remaking Kuli number one like all it works and that's why they they're remaking dostana they're remaking dostana like the problem is that it's not like they're improving anything not artistically and definitely not societally so like if I wanted to watch a tone deaf movie about gay men, I would watch Dostana. I don't need to watch Dostana too. Like, what are you yeah. doing? I I'm kind of yeah. guilty of this a little, a little bit. I'm a little guilty of it because, yeah, I know it, it sucks that the remix, but man, when I'm working out and I want some Bollywood jams, I play Tamma Tamma again. I just, I just play the <laughs> remix. Man, it's too catchy. That's the issue. But yeah, I feel like that is on the side. Like, yeah. Like, I get it if you're adding something of value. Like, totally. Go off. Like, that's fair. If you're just, like, like the Dust Bahane remake is 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 the same song. Like, there there it's is the no difference. Song. It's they the same. Remade, they they remade Musical.ly, and the, yeah, the A.R. Rahman fan inside me died, because I yeah. love Musical.ly. Like, it was a whole different song. Like, it was just completely different. Like, just call it something else, bro. Like, why? Why are you clickbaiting us? That's literally and how I felt the original artist either. Yeah. It's like people like A.R. Rahman, like they deserve more because Tanish Bagji is out here making so many different remixes and not even crediting or honoring the original artist that spent the hours and hours and days to create that masterpiece. And Absolutely. people like A.R. Rahman are mad because, and rightfully so, because you take a beautiful piece of art like Masakali or Ishwar Allah and then you make it into like this remix that's just packaged up and like sold to people like it's horrible yeah um i also want to kind of add on to that um so there's also a lot of like traditional uh, pakistani folk songs like Raske Kamar, like a lot of those beautiful guzzles that are kind of completely like hypersexualized. i definitely mentioned that before but it's like uh, I, I do understand that sometimes they do, like, artists do sell their original pieces to Bollywood to, like, you know, get more money out of it. But there's definitely no crediting on, like, the original pieces of music, which I, I always found so bothersome. I remember when, um, so Long Lachi is, like, a Punjabi song that came out, and it was beautiful. And then I hear, like, the Bollywood version with Kriti Sanon and, uh, was it Karthik Aryan? Karthik Aryan. Karthik Aryan. Oh my god, I was I was cringing the whole time listening to it. I had I played it for my parents and they were just like, wow, is this really what the industry has come to? Yeah, same thing with like all the Nasrat Faseli Khan remakes. Oh like my god, yeah. the original song is so pretty and so beautiful and so 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 fun. And then they take it and make it into something. Like I'm guilty of listening to them because they're nice. But yeah. it's just like it would be nice if they put like, you know originally by Nasrat Fatehli Khan or like something in the credits that shows that they've taken it and like tried to do something new with it which like there's there's no self-awareness it's just tone deaf completely absolutely I mean the Bollywood music industry like the way it's structured there is no such thing as like credit to artists it's like the song belongs to T-series the song yeah. belongs to Z music and then they will do whatever they want with it to make money so like there is yeah. no such thing as like oh this work like belongs to the person who made it like no you you've sold it you're done and that's yeah. why when like uh there are Punjabi like remakes and stuff too like I feel like honestly a lot of the times the artist that it's originally from like say a guru and Dava or something is like coerced into selling the work to mm -hmm. a T series or a Z music company because like the remakes that they make aren't even good. So I don't understand why or how the original artist would want to willingly sell the rights to their independent music to a huge corporation like T-Series. Because at that point, their entire body of work is in ownership of T-Series, which is just not ideal if you're an independent upcoming artist, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, you all talked about remakes. Personally, my problem with remakes is that I feel 
because like we lived in those 80s and 90s times and when they made those movies the society was at a place like kuli number no. 1 or jurwa that those kind of comedy the society has moved in every aspect and then when you bring that kind of movie again you're like portraying and telling people that this is how we portray a female this is how we portray a lover this is a I mean, that's absolutely wrong you're dragging yeah. them back so making yeah. relevant remakes is good when you portray someone who is uh, like i i cannot think of an example but uh, something that is an impact on society you remind them something that happened it's good but making those irrelevant things like even if you want to make a remake you have to kind of adapt to the yeah. society rather than just present it to make you to use to make money yeah i feel like I maybe the tried- Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. I think they tried to do that with Love Achka too. Like <laughs> it was really out here trying, but like like he tried to change it and like do something with it. Like I could tell that he tried, but like bro, the it just, acting it, was so bad. Like it didn't come together. So horrible. Mm-hmm. The execution was horrible. But mm-hmm. if, if a remake like that was executed well in terms of where they take the plot line from the original movie and kind of adapt it to today and what society looks like today then i could understand but that's not what they're doing they're just regressing us back to like trashy 90s 80s like comedies which is not relevant anymore yeah you know, i feel like for me it was probably like i don't know if you guys have seen like the maleficent movie where i was like wow this is like intelligent this is something new it was like It was like you could consider like a sleeping beauty remake I guess but it like brought something fresh you know I mean isn't Om Shanti Om like a remake also Yeah I feel like that movie was yeah. kind of fresh and like also like very um predictive of the future but yeah that movie exposed Bollywood to a whole new Wait, level seriously yeah. yeah that's the movie that like planted in my head where people are like oh Sushant Singh Rajput died I'm like Yeah, well, you know Bollywood is a dangerous place. And then I was like, what did I just say? This is this is acting, not like war. Like what is happening to me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Om Shanti Om did not age well. I know, not at all. I mean, the fa- it was based on facts. So the art got there faster than the journalist, I suppose, I guess. Art imitates life. Life so- imitates art. <laughs> so What do you hope comes out of this? Like, what kind of change? Like, what mean? I would like to hear each one of you say this. That whether do you think the guilty will be charged and punished in this case, and what changes this will bring? Uh, we, Vina, you can start. Yeah, um, I'm very optimistic person in general, so I do really hope that the guilty do come. Like. those who uh, were actually involved with his murder do get you know the the consequences and i do believe that that will happen because of a lot of the societal push towards it and i do hope that this you know if this were to come to light like in result bollywood does get its clean up does get a bit more regulations you know trying to separate the movie mafia <laughs> the industry itself and hopefully like we can get better content from them as well so that's what i'm hoping for um you know we have to be patient at this point but i'm really i'm i really believe that it's going to happen because so many people all around the world are involved with this case or like invested in this case what do you mean yeah i want to be optimistic um i think even if the guilty are charged I think it'll be like a slap on the wrist, you know? Um the rich are able to get away with a lot and are able to get away with pretty much whatever. So I think even if they are charged as guilty, I don't think much will come out of it in terms of punishment, but I do hope that the industry itself does change and I think it will. I just think it'll take time and I think it will take patience from the public and like response from the public. And we are seeing that, right? Like Sadak 2 trailer came out it was literally the most one of the most disliked YouTube videos in such a short span of time too. So the people are speaking out, the people are clear about what they want. So I hope that from this, you know, there's more regulated audition process, a more regulated uh content filter like 
what actually is able to come out in terms of movies, um, not just trashy commercial films, actual relevant content. And I don't know, I just hope that people uh, go and actually put their money to things that they do want to see so that the right talent and the right movies are the ones that get the attention instead of the commercial like masala films all the time. But yeah. Maybe? Yeah, I mean, I feel like to me, what really tells me like what might happen in this case is the idea that Salman Khan was sentenced to five years in jail and yet he's been roaming around on bail since then. And I'm just like the the just the legal system, the justice system, like does it does it exist? Is it like even there? Like I don't know. I feel like every time I watch a Bollywood movie, the police are corrupt. The politicians are corrupt. Like there's no I've never seen a single Bollywood movie where like the police are actually good. The politicians are actually doing good things. Like even if there's like if it's like a cop movie, there'll be like one good cop and the rest are all corrupt. And I'm like, so where how am I supposed to trust in the justice system of this country when my only exposure to it has been the news and the movies where all I hear about is things going wrong. And so, and I'm pretty sure that's pretty real. Like that's kind of what's happening. There's no way they'd be showing that if it wasn't like so widespread that everyone knew about it. And so I feel like someone will go to jail. I hope at least that would seem pretty reasonable. I just hope that they actually get all the way in. Like, yes, maybe Rhea Chakravarti did something, but she didn't just wake up one morning and be like, yo, I'm going to murder Sushant Singh Rajput. Like, someone was paying her a lot of money. Someone was giving her access. And, like, we need to know who that person was because Rhea is, like, replaceable. You know, today it's Rhea, tomorrow it's someone else, yesterday it was somebody else. And they are also, they're not, I highly doubt that they're doing it by choice. No one wakes up one day and like, oh, my dream is to become an assassin girlfriend. Like, nobody wants that out of their life. They've been coerced into the system, and we need to hear from her and see, like, what happened. And so she needs to come forward and tell the truth so that we can really understand, like, what exactly is going on. And so I am just afraid that maybe people, because we have her name, will just get stuck on her and that's it and forget to like look deeper into what's going on. Okay, so I think with this case in general, I don't care who is involved, if it's a politician, if it's a cricketer, if it's one, I don't care who is involved. I just want it to come out in the public, even if it takes it's going to take a long time because there's so many people involved. It's like you're trying to take down a whole industry. So it's going to take a while. I'm willing to wait to like really get the culprits down, not only for Shushant, but also for like Disha Salian and just what happened with her. And that's just in gruesome. And I think whatever went down with Shushant or Disha and everything, like I hope the facts still come out to the public so that we know like, no matter how bad it is, that we know what the reality of this industry is. And I have faith in Mahadev. I know he's angry probably just, just seeing all of this mess and how this is all going down. But it's going to take probably a year or two. But as long as we get the culprits down, we clean up the industry and everything is transparent to the public because I don't want any like facts to be hidden that like, oh, there's drugs, trafficking, this, that, like so many different things that they're going to hide from us. I just want everything to be transparent and... I don't care how long it takes, but just get everyone, every innocent soul who died, whether it's this show or Sushant, like just get them justice. In this case. Yeah, I mean, the idea of transparency is like really important. Like people are harping on the media so much. Like all you talk about is Sushant. All you talk about is Sushant. You never talk about anything else. You guys aren't paying attention. But it's not like if I'm watching the Sushant Singh Rajput case, I've got like blinders on. Like I can still see what else is happening. And knowing about you know, like one crisis in our society, it's not independent. Everything is linked. Like you said, there's drugs, there's trafficking, there's corruption, there's police, there's so much involved. If you start pulling on one thread, you know, it kind of just unravels all around you. But like, 
the people we need to know like what's happening like i can't go there myself and interrogate Rhea Chakraborty or Deepika Padukone or whoever it is like i but i don't trust that the government will do it and actually take action on it if i don't know what's happening so it's really this lack of trust that's the main reason that we feel like we need to hear every little detail absolutely speaking to you all it really gives me hope and i am proud of your optimism and positivity so uh, keep keep doing what you do keep your eyes and ears open watch out for what's happening in society try to raise your voice whenever you can and to all the adults and like old people like me watching i would like to say that you know, youth cannot know how age thinks and feels but we are guilty if we forget what it is to be like young so spread kindness and empathy in every action you do and thank you for being a part of this conversation okay thank you yeah thank you.